This video is about the 4017 counter circuit, which is this chip here, and we have a nice little demonstration circuit built. But you may notice that my diagram is not complete, because on the demonstration circuit, I have my A stable just here, which is connected through an orange wire to the clock. I have my reset button just here, which is connected through these blue wires into the chip. And I have another very important wire attached, which is quite often overlooked, and that's this black wire here, which is not the power supply. It actually goes up here, and that's called the chip enable. And that allows the chip to actually do what it's doing at the moment, which is counting the clock pulses. So this orange LED here is showing me that I'm getting clock pulses in here. And my output, coming along these green wires, are these LEDs. And as you can see quite clearly, at any one time there is one and exactly and only one LED on. And when it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. So it's counting the number of pulses that come in through the clock. Very straightforward. Let's have a look, see what happens when you press the reset button. Well, two things that happen. Immediately, the output goes back to the first LED which is output 0, Q0. And the second thing to notice is that while I keep the reset button pressed down, the clock is no longer being counted. The A stable is still working, but it's not changing the display. When I let go, it counts again. And it's counting on the rising edges of the clock. So when this LED comes on, these LEDs change. So that's the basic operation. Now we'll have to look and see if we can do something more complex with it. So first I'm going to do a bit of circuit modification. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my reset, like this. But the circuit continues to work because it still has its pull-down resistor keeping the reset low. I'm now going to remove the LED from output Q6. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that one there. I'm going to take the output that was driving Q6, which is this one just here, and connect it into my vacant reset pin. So what I've done there is I've taken a pink wire from Q6 and connected it to the reset. And now you can see what's happening is that my counter, instead of being a 10 output counter, is now a 6 output counter. So what's happening? When the output Q6 comes on, which is now, it resets the counter to 0. So this makes the 4017 very useful. It doesn't have to count from 1 to 10. It can count from 1 to anything you want. So we've looked at the reset. Now let's have a look at this connection just here, which is the clock enable. And it's currently connected to zero. And I'm going to disconnect it and see if anything happens. And what you might have noticed is the clock's become a little bit erratic. The counter's become erratic. It's not reliable. It's still counting, but it's not doing a very good job. If I connect it to, if I connect the clock enable to positive, then what happens now is the counter stops counting completely. So when the chip enable is connected to positive, like it is now, the 4017 doesn't count. If I take the positive connection back out, it becomes slightly erratic. I can make it count just by touching it. If I connect it back to zero, it becomes a reliable counter again. So to make the 4017 chip count reliably, you have to have the enable connected to zero. And to stop it counting completely, you have to have it connected to positive. And like any other input, you shouldn't leave it floating. Now this gives us a chance to do something different again. Let's just rebuild our circuit slightly. I'm going to take the enable out, the reset out. 
I'm going to take the enable out. I'm going to connect in 7 to our chip inhibit, our clock inhibit. I'm going to find my reset button and put it back in. And what I'll do now is I've got the counter reset at zero. Watch what happens when I let go. And no more counting. This is still counting, but the counter has stopped. What's happened here? Let's have another look. Reset it. It counts the expected, but it gets to output Q6, which is now connected to the enable. Q6 has gone high, the enable has gone high, the counter has stopped counting. Reset it. It counts and then stops. So by using the enable in this way, we can have a circuit that counts a series of clock pulses, and when it gets to a predetermined value, it stops. Finally, I've returned my circuit to its original state. I've removed the pink wire. Much easier to do on a diagram. Much easier to do on the circuit, sorry, than on the diagram. And we're back to our original counter, counting all 10 outputs. And there's just one more thing to demonstrate, and that's the final pin on the chip, which has not been used. So I'm going to borrow my clock LED. I'd like to have a look at this pin here. And what you'll notice is it appears to stay on, but now it goes off. So this output is on for count 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and off for 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this output now is a square wave, which is one tenth of the frequency of the original clock. So the 4017 is now acting as a divide by 10 counter.